Father, we give you the praise and the honor because you deserve it. You are God all by yourself and we lift you, O Jehovah. We are here in your presence, O Jesus. Bow down and worship him.
Lord today. Hallelujah. Um, just a quick reminder again, we have designated parking at the back. If your car is not parked at the back, please just go to the information desk. Someone will assist you with moving your car for the sake of the safety of your car. Amen. So welcome to Living Oracles Tabernacle by Zalwane and Apostolic and Prophetic New Testament Church. We are a church burdened with demonstrating the kingdom, the glory and the power of Christ. Amen. We are led by Apostles Cyril Peterson and Amy Peterson. Amen. Um, special greetings, Muruji. Hallelujah. And Mamruji in absentia. Um, also, I'd just like to acknowledge our online community. You did well by tuning in. Hallelujah. We are all going to have a great time in the house of the Lord. Amen. And also, I'd just like to appreciate uh, the servants of the Lord that are here with us tonight. Amen. Amen. Um, uh, we have our bathroom, our unisex bathroom on my left at the back. Um, our wonderful, <laughs> wonderful sister is standing over there. Should you ever need to relieve yourself, you can just approach her. She'll be able to assist you. And on my right at the back, um, we have our water dispenser. Should you need to refresh yourself during the service, please help yourself to some fresh water. Amen. And then um, we have people wearing this WOW team badges. Uh, all around the church if you need assistance we are here to serve you should you need any assistance with anything just reach out to one of us raise your hand and we'll be able to assist you amen um and um yeah we are here it's our first night of the prophetic conference amen so <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah amen so um please just Take the time again. If you have not done this, please just go on Facebook and go to the Living Oracles page. Like our live stream, share it and host a watch party. Amen. Also go to Facebook and check in. Let them know that you had the prophetic conference tonight. Hallelujah. Um, yes. And um, so we are just going to um, welcome one another. Is anyone here coming to Living Oracles for the very first time? Please just stand. Um, would like to appreciate you. Amen. amen. Anyone here for the very first? Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo! Show them some love. Hello. Show them some love. If you're sitting next to them, please show them some love. I'm just going to hand over to Nataf now as we welcome one another. Amen. You are my strength.
Prelude. Today we are under the ministry of Shibboleth. Hallelujah. The river, the prophetic revival team. Uh, so we're going to do a little bit, a little something right now. <laughs> we're going to introduce you to something. Amen. <laughs> Shibboleth. Flow, flow. River flow. 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 Come on, church. Shibboleth. Flow, flow. River flow. 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 I better a little bit louder as I can hear you. I mean, she ballet, flow, flow, river flow. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, Mazalwane. We are she ballet, and this is how we flow. So um, I'm just going to welcome our first producer for tonight. It's Brother Lindo, and once he's done, uh, Brother Sizwe, you can ascend the stage. Amen, Mazalana. Um, um, yeah, I'd like to greet um, the house at large. Amen. And I would like to also um, greet Mfundisi, Noma Mfundisi, Noma Nyeko. Amen. Um, yeah, um, yeah. Can I be myself? Amen. Can I be myself? Amen, Mazalana. Jesus. Amen, Mazalana. So, um, now, we see something in the Bible. Yeah, well, um, what we see is we see God creating a place called Eden. Amen, Bazalwan. And when God creates a place called Eden, He creates a garden in that very same place called Eden. Amen, Bazalwan. And then from Eden, He then allows the river to flow into the garden. Amen, Bazalwan. And when that river has now flowed into that garden, He allows it to now to split to, into four river heads. Amen, Bazalwan. So we see God allowing this very thing to flow from a place called Eden. If you um, understand the meaning of Eden, it means desire. Amen. So God allows the river to flow from his desire. Amen, Bazalwan. He allows a prophetic generation to come out from his desire. He allows a flow to be birthed from his desire. If you read the book of Revelation, it says that you have created all things for your desire. Amen, Bazalwan. So he allow all these things to happen for the purposes of his desire desire being fulfilled. Amen, Bazalwan. So we come as a people, we come as a prophetic people from the desire of God. We come as a prophetic voice speaking the desires of God. We don't speak our own things, we don't declare our own things, but we stand in the desire of God. Amen, Bazalwan. So, after he has allowed this to happen, eh, the Bible tells us about the river from the, from the temple, amen, which makes us priests. The river from the belly, which makes us um, prophets. The, the river from the throne, which makes us um, kings. Hallelujah. But then the Bible notes something. There's a river or there's a flow that comes from the rock. Amen, Bazalwan. That makes us servants. Prophets are servants to the people. They speak as God allows for his people. Amen. So the key emphasis of a prophetic ministry is servanthood. Amen, Bazalwan. So the key emphasis of the prophetic ministry, ministry, amen, is Lung, Jesus. Hallelujah. Is what is servanthood. But then what is my point? What am I trying to build up to? The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 10 verse 41, it says that, um, I'm trying to come down, amen. Jesus. Matthew chapter 10. I see Kalegu 40. It is he that receiveth you, receiveth me. 
he that received me received him that sent me. 41 it says that he that received a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. Amen, Bazalwan. So, Ujeso, before speaking about a prophet's reward, he speaks about how then who those that receive you, they receive him. Amen, Bazalwan. So, the emphasis of a of, of someone who says I'm prophetic, someone who says I'm moving in the dimension of the prophetic, his is his reflection and his stance should be Christ. Hallelujah. Because your words can only be received if they reflect Jesus. Hallelujah. Your words can only be impactful if they reflect Jesus. So Jesus comes as the standard. Hallelujah. Jesus comes as a standard in our prophetic flow, in our prophetic life. Amen, Bazalwan. But then the Bible says, um, if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you will receive a prophet's reward. Amen, Bazalwan. So we see how name now denotes nature. Amen, Bazalwan. We see how name denotes nature. We see the function of a prophet in order to be called a prophet. Hallelujah. You are not declared a prophet because you feel like it. You declare the prophet because of the function of the prophetic ministry upon your life. Hallelujah, Bazalwan. When Jesus was baptized, it says that when he came out of the water, then God says, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. You see the pleasure again. Hallelujah. But he does not say, this is Jesus, my son. But he says, this is my son because his nature is more important than his name. Hallelujah, Bazalwan. Because in his nature, then we are able to find his name. But in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, it says something so nice. We don't see God saying, you are Adam. Hallelujah. But we see over time, because of the works of the man, he's noticed as Adam, man. So it was his nature to be a man. And there he found his name. So, if then we are to be prophetic in nature, if then we want to be called prophetic, then there has to be a resemblance to the one who sent us. But Jesus, when he, before he comes here, he starts a, a disciple ministry. Before he gets to this point, he starts a disciple ministry. He gives them power. He tells them how they should follow him. He tells them how they should believe in him. Hallelujah, Bazalwan. So this is the power of a prophetic minister. To follow the master. To speak as the master speaks. Not his own desires. No. But the desires of God. Because the river that flows, it flows from the desire of God. Our action, our move. It flows from the desire of God into the garden. That's why when prophetic words are spoken, there's, multipli there's multiplication, there's growth. Because the words go through the garden, the bosom of God. They are, they are immense with the presence of God. So we cannot speak prophetic words and there's no change. There has to be change. There has to be transformation. For the first time we see the name prophet, we see a prophet praying for life. Hallelujah. So we see the prophetic ministry linked with life. And the Bible tells us that how God said in the beginning, let there be life and there was. So we carry the ability to present the life of God as it is on this earthly realm. As a prophetic people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, greetings to the lovely saints. Um, special greetings to uh, Apostle Cyril Peterson and his lovely wife, Amy Peterson. Um, we love them. Uh, special greetings to Moriti Griffith. We love you, sir. Um, hallelujah, Vazalwan. It's good to have you here. Kalabona uh, Nizotata into zinu, Jesus. Nizozi tata. Keep prophetic service. Yeah, no. Uh, the desire is justified tonight, Jesus. Let us clap hands for God. Amen. I need this tata. was a lot. Keep prophetic service. Come on. Um, yeah, um, Lutile, I'm from Shibole. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
Amen. Um, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter number 28. Um, um, whom shall I teach knowledge and whom will he make to understand? Whom shall he teach knowledge and whom will he make to understand the message? Those who are weaned from the milk or those who are drawn from the breast. For precept shall be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Here a little, there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people. To whom he said, This is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. Ah, Jesus. So, Isaiah Gawana is the prophet that is carrying the mini Bible. He's the prophet with 66 chapters. He's the only prophet that talks about the birth of Jesus. You know, his life and even his ascension and his crucifixion. He is a prophet, you know, that literally carries a mini Bible. And now, Halimu, he's seeing a New Testament reality. Over oh, the tongues. For God will speak to his people with a stammering leap and another tongue. Joel Hayabon. Joel says, and on that day I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. Your, even your daughters shall see visions and your, your old men shall have dreams that are dreams. And God goes on to say, and I will perform signs and wonders upon the earth. So when Joel sees Pentecost, ne? Obana, visions, dreams. Baba, he's seeing old men dreaming in the night. He's seeing young men seeing visions. He's seeing daughters Obana, seeing visions. And have a Obana, the signs and wonders as they are prophesying. So they are doing this thing. They are speaking and God watches his word over to perform. But now when it comes to pass, Peter as an apostle they are in the upper room, 120 of them, and they are blowing the trumpet. Papi is there. So, how many busy speaking in another tongue? Ne? Peter. So, when they are there, ne? this is a Pentecostal encounter. But now, what is happening in Pentecost? Poor Peter are speaking in tongues. They are not even prophesying. They are speaking in another language. But when Joel sees this, I didn't know they are not just speaking in another language. They are actually prophesying. But when Isaiah sees the same occasion, our God is teaching them knowledge. God is giving them understanding of doctrine. And not only that, God is giving them rest. So now he's giving them also refreshing, and all of these people, but we now Pentecost. So Peter Aleta, Arizekete, Wobo, and 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 there are others as well, and and they are speaking in other tongues as as as, as they are there. As the Spirit is giving them utterance, and they are speaking in the language that there are others who are outside cannot hear. But you see, those who are outside, ne, it is intelligible to them, but to those that are inside, they can one another. You understand? So to those that are outside, it's fine. Obo. So they are declaring the mysteries of God in an intelligible language, but inside it is not. They are speaking a mystery, not as the man teaches, but as the Holy Ghost teaches. And now when this thing is happening, now something happens in Peter. Because remember, Isaiah said that God will teach them knowledge and he will cause them to understand doctrine. So while is Peter at home, and after an oppressor in a vest bubbles up, what a tomayere this is that. What a tomayere this is that. He then has boldness to confront the crowd. I mean, this is that. 
Joel spoke about. And now we see that the first New Testament uh, sermon after Jesus left uh, is a sermon, a sermon that came from a place of prayer. You see, if you do not have a prayer life, uh, you do not have a sermon. You understand? If you do not have a prayer life, uh, you do not have a sermon. You understand? So the first sermon that Peter gave, uh, well, when it came after speaking in tongues and, and travailing, and suddenly as the, the Bible says, the Spirit of God searches all things, uh, even the deep things of God. So you understand this verse and from then he convicted the crowd and the crowd after what then must we do I repent and be baptized so as the prophetic people this river is right here in your belly you understand God is provoking visions in your spirit. A dream for the night. And some of these things Muruta di rarang Awo di talo ha nyivele Mara Hoto ma ubulela ka di tangzine In that occasion The Bible says that He will even cause us To understand doctrine So hoto ma understand That is why sometimes After you have prayed The Bible slaps different So Peter ha ibo nanti Peter ha ibo now when they walk like that, Jonah, they even come out. Né? They come out with these visions, with these dreams, Gobo, and utterances. But they are locked up in this experience. And then Paul, when he sees it, he teaches us a more excellent way to do it. And when you speak in another tongue, guys, no man, you can actually interpret. For the sake of order. Remember those that were inside did not hear one another. But those that were outside could hear one another. So the problem is not really in whether we hear each other or not. It is permitted and permissible that we do not hear one another. It is a mystery to God. But for the sake of modification. And for us to tap in the prophet, into the prophetic dimension. So that God performs signs and wonders like Joel said. Then we call out an interpreter. To come and interpret this tongue. So that we might perceive what God is doing among us. So if we don't hear each other, it's okay. Paul, it's okay. Paul, it's okay. And if we hear each other, glory be to God. We are edified corporate. So we cannot silence even each other on the basis of uh, 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 No, the question is, do we have this experience or not? Do we have it? I have it. Yeah. So of course, I will walk in signs and wonders. That's what the Bible says. After There is a hunger. Because the Bible says that and God shall perform signs. Like I'm perceiving something. You understand? I'm charged up for it. Because this is what God saw. Okay, okay. Bible verse no say it alone, honey, like you did. If he come and after fit for a pillow, oh, why? Because God is speaking, and He's doing that for your refreshment. He's doing it so that you can be more prophetic, and not only prophetic, so that you can understand doctrine. So, that, so, so your experience in great biblical revelations is even attached to this experience. No, that's what the Bible says. Hey, doctrine. Hey, doctrine, doctrine. Ah, it's because our belly. That is why doctrine now called. But if you were to pray, you understand? God will be, put, you know, into your spirit, man. God will be imparting the understanding of doctrine. It's just my prayer life is dry. Yeah, God said this in this he will bring refreshing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do not walk in signs and wonders. How And 
and this thing your prophet it begins right here it begins right here god watches over his word to perform it we're not prophet speak in another tongue go go yeah we we want to provoke an interpretation in the atmosphere so that paul and peter might agree that one is a more excellent way fell but at the end edification is still achieved whether to the individual or the church bazalane we are shibale then we flow like that amen amen hallelujah amen let's just <laughs> yeah no ke shibale hallelujah let's just appreciate brother lindo brother sinya thank you so much for this wonderful prelude let's try this one more time shibale 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 flow flow river flow shibale <laughs> hallelujah we are shibale and this is how we flow um just a few quick announcements um it's our prophetic conference wasalwani today is our first night i am so excited i am so excited tomorrow we have our school of ministry it starts at 10 registration starts at 9 10 o'clock ratoma 10 o'clock we are not ar- arriving ratoma um and registration fee is 400 can i see those who have registered for the confer- for the school of ministry sorry ah, ah, ah. i don't think this is 50% of us so i'm sorry now i'm making other people people feel ashamed but no this is this is for your benefit wasalo and it's a power power packed day tomorrow and i would encourage you there is still ch- there is still a chance to register if you'd like to be here tomorrow please just vin- visit the info desk and we will assist you with registration amen it's just in yana 400 hallelujah <laughs> and then uh and then on sunday morning we have um our conference service it's still a conference on sunday morning our our service starts at 10 um we are a family that prays together bazalwane at 10 o'clock we start with intercession um please be here at 10 and then on sunday we have an afternoon service uh, it starts at 4 So we have two financial challenges um in the house. One is our weekly offering challenge of 50 rand and the other one is our future change, future church challenge of 200 rand monthly. Um this is separate from our monthly pledges and tithes and our next future church drive will be on the 29th of May. Hallelujah. Um we have come to the time of the word. Um I'm just going to hand over to our wonderful apostle hallelujah um Natav please just
If you can just for a few more minutes linger in his presence. Just linger in his presence. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. The throne is yours, O God. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, has in the beginning laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. As a vesture, he shall fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same. And the years fail not. With knowledge we ascribe righteousness to you. Father, we pray that you drench us from above. You crown the air with thy goodness. And your path, they drop fatness. Father, we walk in that path by revelation. And we all, with open faith, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord. Father, bring us to that place called open faith, where we behold you face to face. Bring us to that place, O oh Father. For covenantal, you have already achieved it. Father, tonight we pray, may your word be spoken in revival piercing our innermost being piercing our innermost being bringing us into the realities of the New Testament bringing us into the realities of who we are dear God tonight we are expectant and our hearts are thirsty we yearn and we thirst we thirst for so much more Father God our hearts are fertile ground fertile 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 Father, we pray that you would water that seed of the word. That you would water that seed of the word. May your doctrine drop like rain today. To water that seed, that good seed of the kingdom, which had been sown. Father, God, bring us to a place of fruitfulness. A place of fruition. God, we bless you, O God. With knowledge, we ascribe righteousness to you. With knowledge. Good evening, brethren. Good evening, brethren. In this moment, um, I'd like us to to receive an, an offering. Uh, I get to ask, I was coming for offering, very time for the word. But it's okay. We can also give herela. In fact, it is those offerings which are made, you may be seated in heavenly places. You may also be seated for a while. In fact, it is those offerings which are made while you are crying, which make uh, yeah, some things shift in the kingdom. Welcome, everyone, to Living Oracle Tabernacle, an apostolic and a prophetic New Testament church. Can you give Jesus praise? Amen. Come on, can you give Jesus praise? Uh, my lovely wife and I um, welcome you. We are so stoked, so excited that you could be here. Um, this conference, get the last minute. 
Bravo. Get it last minute. Um, it was one of those urgent things that they make this thing happen and make it happen as soon as possible. I want um, to shift dates a bit. Um, yeah, but I'm glad that we are here. Can you appreciate the presence of Muruti Griffith, a man who will be ministering tonight? A dynamic gift to the body. Amen. Can I appreciate the presence of my spiritual father? Uh, my papa. Amen. Can I appreciate him, Apostle Kabelo Moroke? Uh, I'm a man under authority. Amen. Uh, yeah, I'm a man under authority. I am accountable. Coins if he's us. Yeah. Uh, we love you, Muruti. Thank you for coming. You are honored. Uh, when a man of your caliber visits a service, you know, um, we know who we are. Amen. There is power. Uh, I want us to receive an offering. Uh, there are three payment options, or rather giving options. Um, we have the offering basket here. Um, we also have our speed point. Ne, Sister Tobile, right there, ne, next to the water cooler. She has the, the speed point. Yet her power as as well. It also swipes. You know, so if you're using Apple Pay or Samsung Pay, you can tap with your phone. Ne, you can also tap with your card. Ne, um, if you need an envelope, ne, maybe the Lord prompts you ne, and you want to give a special offering, there are envelopes right there. You can make use of them. The Bible says for as long as the earth remains, seek time and harvest. There are times for seed, Bazalwan. Seek time. Ne, be discerning. Or, you know, this is a seed moment. The Bible says God gives bread to the eater and seed to the sower. You know, so recognize the seed and recognize the bread. When God provides, there's something for you to eat. But when God provides, there's something for you to sow. Learn to sow. Learn to practice biblical principles. Many people are asking for wealth. They're asking for money. They're asking for all these things. But they are not observing biblical principles. They are not observing biblical teachings concerning that. To summarize the entire story in the Bible, it is simple. Now, this is the order of how you should manage and steward your finances. Give, save, live. The first priority when there's an income is giving. The second thing you should prioritize is saving. This includes your investments. And whatever remains, that's what you must live off. What have we done? There is an error in the system. And how do we see the error in the system? That the enemy has turned things upside down. And that is the problem. That's why we can never access wealth. We can never attain unto wealth. That is the problem in our generation. There is an error in the system. For example, the Bible says, the least among you shall be the servant of all. Or the greatest among you, sorry shall be the servant of all. So the one who is the servant shall be the greatest. And then if you check ne, the companies which are doing the best, ne, when it comes to service delivery and customer satisfaction, they are on point. It's a hint in ya, no, okay, if you serve, you will be great. You know, the Bible says sow and then you will reap. What do we do? We reap first and then we want to sow after. That's why we are in vicious cycles of debt. Now, let me get this phone now and I'll pay for it later. So we reap first and then we sow after. So now the system has been reversed. And because the system has been reversed, do you think you're going to get out of debt? We have turned it around. So now, if we would discipline ourselves and revisit the model God gave us, and revisit that. God, God will bless us indeed if you honor his word. Now listen to what the Bible says. We are stewards. The principle is simple. God is the owner. Man is the steward. The principle is simple. God owns. Man is the steward. First Chronicles 29, Solomon says, 
of thine own have we given to you. Even what we have offered for this temple is yours, of your own have we given unto you. We need to have that revelation that whatsoever we have, God has given us stewardship over. And I want to start there, as I want to encourage you tonight to give. Because that's why I'm here, to collect an offering, to encourage, admonish, and teach you on giving. So, at the end of this sermon, there is a call to action. And what is that call to action? Give. Not sermon presentation. At the end of it, again, give. Let's look at it. Solomon says, of thine own have we given thee. God is the owner of all things. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Uh, Psalm 50, I own the cattle upon the thousand hills. If I was hungry, I would not tell you. You know, so God owns everything. But men are but stewards. So we need to practice stewardship of what God has designated authority to us over. And we need to be found faithful in our stewardship. So now I'm going to draw us to a story. And I want us to look at Abraham. Hebrews 11. Quickly. Hebrews 11. The book of Hebrews. Chapter 11. Get the heroes of faith. Ne? Let's take it from verse 17. 17 to 19. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Verse 19. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. From men also he received him in a figure. What do we learn from this portion of scripture? The writer of Hebrews is telling us something ne, about what happened on that mountain. He's giving us a different perspective of things that happened on that mountain. I might as well use this opportunity to do a little bit of apologetics. What kind of God expects of a man to give his only begotten son? Because what happened there is not a parable. It's not a metaphor. Literally happened. And then they will ask questions. But okay, let's look at Abraham and Isaac. Looking at Abraham and Isaac, God says, kill your only son. There are some things God speaks to you about. You speak to no one else about. Do you think Sarah has she known this was going to happen? Luna Kapu's ministry, hello. Cafe. There are some things Ne? Bon, there are some things when God speaks to you, you keep them to yourself. Hello, give me a call feed. But uh, I'll offer up your son, your only son Isaac. You know, offer him up. You know this story, man. Ay, 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 ay. So what kind of God Murudi? would ask of me to give Eden as an offering. Now, just put yourself in that place where I know that kind of God I can't worship, I can't serve, that kind of God. As if God is on an interview for your faith. Uh, that God I can't serve. As if, as if. Our problem, that is our problem. We have reduced him to our constructs. We have reduced him to, to philosophy. Get the spirit of this age. But let's do a little bit of apologetics. The Bible says Abraham was accounting that God 
is able to raise him from the dead. So now the writer of Hebrews is giving us more information, extra enlightening. So it's in parentheses. He's giving revelation. Actually, Abraham was believing that God will raise him from the dead. That's why he was he was willing to offer up Isaac. So God. So now we are seeing more detail into that narrative. That something which is not mentioned in the narrative elsewhere in scripture is addressed. So the Bible is explaining itself. He was he was accounting that God can raise him from the dead and therefore receive Jesus in a figure. To Abraham Isaac was dead because he lifted up the sword and Isaac is here. So when we're looking at the story we're seeing the picture of Messiah that he will come from a barren womb. So there's a virgin who knew no man and this virgin who knew no man conceived. So now we are seeing in a figure how how Sarai who was past the age is now pregnant and with child her womb is not supposed to give birth but yet there is a seed in it in the picture of Mary whose womb knows no man yet there is a seed in it so he receiving him in a figure but not only that there shall be a requirement and this requirement shall be to offer up the son but the requirement is not on the mother but on the father that's why Sarah is not involved in the picture it is the father who wants his son to be slaughtered because on the cross it is the father who will slaughter his only son I need you to understand the essence of the gospel the essence of the gospel is not God saving us from Satan the emphasis of the gospel is not the deliverance from Satan the essence of the gospel is God directing his holy wrath at his son and I am going to slaughter my son and on that mountain Abraham rejoiced are Jehovah Jireh he wasn't renaming God but he was naming the altar are Jehovah Jireh because God will provide it's a verse we love so much but we have to understand what is it that God will provide? He will provide his son. He will provide an atonement for sin. He will provide a way to everlasting life. There is a greater provision of God. God, what will he provide? I like it in the King James. Hey, he will provide himself a lamb. So no, he's already telling us that God will provide himself a lamb. Meaning he himself will be that lamb. That's why we find a ram. And then this ram is not a lamb. But this ram is fully grown. It's got horns. And then this ram with horns is caught with his horns upon a thicket. A thorn bush. It's a picture of how when the lamb grows up into a ram, its head will be caught in a thorn bush. That's why we see Jesus with a crown of thorns. He is bound by the will of God. He is bound by God's will. I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited. I'm getting accounting that God was able to raise him from the dead. So now we're getting a fuller picture of what God, remember Abraham is a prophet. We're getting a fuller picture of what God was into Abraham. So, have about another story. He's receiving him in a figure. Right there on that altar, get the crucifixion. But he gets Isaac back. And then that relief, it's a picture of the ascension. He is risen. Why seek ye the living among the dead? That's why Isaac carried his own wood up the cross. When there's a bunch of wood you are carrying, I wait for it. If a caliphate, why people? So in that story, we see the sun carrying his own wood up a mountain just like a figure of someone who's to come who will carry his own wood 
But this time, there's no one who's going to say, Stop from slaughtering your own son. There is no one who's going to come and intervene. Abraham put the knife down. So what is the knife? Zechariah 13, a week of sword. Smite the shepherd. The sheep will be scattered. What sword is this? First mentioned Genesis. And then a flaming sword was placed at the opening of the garden to guard the way. Now the father is ready to slaughter his son. A week of sword. The way has not been made open. The father takes the flaming sword in a figure, slaughters his only son. That's what happened. I see foolish things on Facebook. But, you know, it's a meme, ne? but God could have just killed Satan instead of killing his own son. And evil will end. Most of our weak loses their faith. No matter why. Why not just kill Satan? We don't understand the offense. We don't understand the offense. But we are not there. This is where I am. Because I need you to give. This is where I am. As the father so lavishly given with his son. He was accounting that God is able to raise him from the dead. When you give with your money, it is dead to you. Don't ask us, let's hang on. Whatever. It is dead to you. But God is able to raise it. God is able to raise it. It is dead to you. It's a sacrifice. God still accepts sacrifice. You're not too woke. You know what's the problem? You are too woke. That's my problem. You woke, 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 woke. If Jesus was here today, you would be rebuking him. How can you stand before the offering basket? You're intimidating us. Where is the fruit of the Spirit, Jesus? Why are you standing? Why are you comparing the offerings? And who gave more? Ah, don't do that, Jesus. Did you know? Brethren, let us give you an offering tonight. And I want us to fight against the scarcity mentality that I have to hold. I want us to fight the scarcity mentality that after this seed, there will be nothing left. Do you know God also accepts sacrifice? You know Jesus, ne? the one who owns the cattle on a thousand hills, did not say to the woman, woman, wait, that's the last dime you have. We accept it. I know, be respond. He accepted it. But Cyril would be like, no, 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 no. She gave it willingly. I kiss him. Cheerful giver, ridiculous. Willingly, I kiss. And he accepted it. So where is she going to get her next meal? That's why God tests us in these two areas. What we rely on on most. Fasting, because we rely on food. And giving, because we rely on money. These two areas, God requires a period to withhold. To deny ourselves. These are the two areas which grow your faith the most. You get with that. Why did God give us fasting? Do you know? Hey, I'm fasting TV. Nonsense. Guys, can we prepare something in our hearts? Something generous. Something prophetic. I click the prophetic conference. Let God speak to you prophetically what you should give. Why, why am I here? I am here to collect and ask for an offering. To ask for an offering, that's why I'm here. And as they'll be giving us a song, the, 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 the two ladies can come help us with the offering baskets. If you've got cash, the baskets are here. If you want to swipe or tap, the device is right there with Sister Tobil. If you want to EFT, you know, if you want to EFT, the banking details are on the screen. And then if you're watching the stream, give with a sticker on YouTube. Give with a star on Facebook. You'll be able to give. Or you can click on the link. It will take you to a payment gateway. Let us give something generous. 
You know, if everyone can give 100 rand, I'm telling you, on a conference, say, you see, so in No, we would we'll be, we we'll be gliding, we we'll be gliding. If everyone can just give 100 rand in jail. So in Ghana, because I'm looking at people, like this. if everyone here can give, if everyone here can give into hell, ah, see how many voices, sing again and voice, on. So I'm encouraging someone. I'm exhorting someone. Tomorrow we'll be teaching you about prophesying. Today we're teaching you about giving. Ne, so uh, they're gonna give us a song, and they're gonna come and minister. As they minister the song, please feel free come and hold in your offering. You know, um, your your love gift. You can EFT it. I want a Gabana Babilo announcement the mole. So, Banabak Mahai, be good guests, be good hosts. Ne, be good hosts. Hallelujah. And um, they will give us a song. And as they give us the song, uh, can we kindly just come and give in here? Um, if you want to run to your car, run. They'll still be here. You can come and hold it in here. Seed time, Seed time. Um, so, yeah, without any further ado, I'm going to hand over to Nataf, the minister in song, and then, um, yeah, we'll take it from there. Amen. Glory. Oh, it is you, Equally when I
Heavenly Father, we thank you for the offering. We thank you for we have given with a promise. Like Isaac, we have given with a promise and we are trusting you with it. To some, this is their faith giving. Because giving is an act of faith. The first act of faith in Hebrews is Abel giving. We give by faith. And Father, we just want to pray over this offering. And we know that Isaac will rise. That we know. Because our God is faithful. Our God always provides. Our God always meets our needs. Blessed be the name of the Lord, the Most High. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Can I appreciate Jesus one more time? Amen. Okay, um, at this moment, go back. I believe you got the key. Uh, and we want to receive a vessel of God a, a mighty man of God he is like the tents of Kushan in their affliction where the Lord is just blowing in his tent and the wind is radical you know um uh, Every though the vine withhold her fruit. A mighty man. The Bible speaks of Naphtali, who is a hind, let loose, giving goodly words. A hind is a deer, a picture of an apostolic company. Naphtali means to wrestle. This is a man God has ordained to contend for the prophetic in our, in our dispensation. Erin uh, Naftali is a hind let loose, giving goodly words, meaning God has unleashed Naftali and is giving goodly words. There is a word, there is a groan from the throne. Let our hearts be expectant. Ne, let let, let faith arise in this room. Ne, let faith arise in this room. When the Son of Man comes, will you find faith? Ne, let faith arise in this room. You know, and let the wind of God blow. How it will blow. Let Him blow over us. Let Him minister to us. However, He will want to minister. Let our hearts be open to rebuke. Let it be open to encouragement. Let it be open to impartation. Let it be open to exhortation. Let it be open to, to the dealings of God. They're going to lead us in worship. And men of God, uh, when you are ready, Murut, uh, please ascend. Uh, the pulpit is yours. You are in authority. Uh, as the Holy Ghost unctions you, you know, as the, as the Holy Ghost unctions you, we, we are here. You know, we are the threshing floor. Minister to us. You know, uh, uh, yeah, be free, Murut. Nataf.
Come on, begin to pray. Lebro Santa, say something to him.
of the spirit there's an impartation of the spirit don't miss it
utterance, prophetic utterance is falling down like rain. There's an unlocking that is happening in the realm of the spirit. An unlocking without the laying of hands that the Holy Spirit is doing and operating. company, raise up a company Lord, raise up a company. I cancel any Zangomic spirit and its operation in the name of Jesus. been a prophetic struggle and now I see freedom. A prophetic freedom. The expression. There's increase. Can you can you can you sense the increase? There's increase. Increase of the flow. Increase of the flow. Ita sete. Word of knowledge is. Word of knowledge. Word of knowledge. One eight, I see one eight, I see eighteen, eighteen June, eighteen June. Can I pray for you? Eighteen June, one eight June. You are born on the eighteenth of June. Can I pray for you? Prophetic authority, prophetic grace. I see you on posters, enhancing the prophetic. And God is saying that I'm going to raise you up as a prophetic vessel and it will be like a lot of people are speaking while you are only speaking one voice. I see a prophetic river that will affect your peers and your generation. Ironically, I see it in Amman's Kral. I, I see it in Amman's Kral and other areas. I don't know. But, but, but I see that the Spirit of the Lord will begin to work a good work in you. A work that will bring you into a place of confidence. He says, he's telling me that you have confidence in presenting the prophetic. 
but it's bringing you into confidence in flowing in word of knowledge. Confidence in flowing in the gifts of the Spirit, especially utterance gifts, revelation gifts. I see the grace that will befall you. And the Holy Spirit says that if you become faithful at it, I will launch you into even other regions and provinces and Whitbank and other places. It will be like... uh, it will be like a movement. It will be like a movement. And, uh, and you have been worried about the support. But the Holy Spirit says that do it even if you are doing it to five people. I see increase. I hear the Spirit of the Lord say that I will raise up the mature even under your voice. That over the years you've been desiring this. You've been, li- you've been uh, wanting this. You wanted it so bad. And the Holy Spirit says that I will fulfill your heart desires. There's an increase of grace. There's an increase of his presence. There's an increase of hunger. In the prophetic. I thank you Holy Ghost. For even increase. In prophetic discipline. I thank you that they will be one of the kind that he will build with many. He will grow many. He will walk with many. Even as you develop and nurture him. I thank you, Holy Ghost. I thank you. Fill the cup Fill him with a prophetic river. Let it overflow. Let it rise. In Jesus' name. I see a name. Something like that. It has to do with something like that. Can I pray for you, please? Spirit of the living God, I thank you even for him. The Spirit of the Lord says that I must tell you that your dedication will reward you. I hear the Spirit of the Lord says that say, stay put, stay firm, grow where he has planted you. I see that you will bear much fruit. You will even bear fruit even in business, says the Spirit of truth. He says that I must encourage you not to give up. He says that I'm encourage, I must encourage you not to let go. I don't know what you are going through, but there's a need for change and a, and a swap that the Holy Spirit is doing in your life. He is turning things around, and he says that I must tell you that the turning and the shifting that is happening is caused by him. I see a wind that is blowing your way to shift you from a certain position into another. And it's uncomfortable, but the Holy Spirit says that I must tell you that it is His doing. It is His doing. So don't fight it. Don't hinder it. Move as He leads you. There is strength in your hand. I see Samson. And God says that there is strength in you. He says that I'm building you up in courage. I'm building you up in strength. I'm building you up in knowledge, in understanding, and in my weight. For I see you standing and ministering to people. I see you laying hands on the sick. And God says that he has told you before that he wants his people well. He said, I want my people well. I want them healed. I want them recovered through the laying of your hands, says the Spirit of Truth. You are coming into a season of great revival. It has been quiet for far too long. Your, your, your things that pertains to prayer life and so forth have just been normal. But there is a, I'm here to announce that there is a move of God that is coming to you. And as it comes, it's going to open wide even your prayer life. And God is going to demonstrate this word with signs following and do not draw back. Father, I pray for a season that will rise and flow even through him in Jesus' mighty name. I pray, amen. I see a date. I see for, for July. Does it make sense? 
Sorry? Birthday. Your birthday for July. The Spirit of the Lord says. There's a prophetic river that I see. There's an unction within you. I thank you, Holy Ghost, even for her. 1996, am I right? I thank you, Lord, for your grace. I thank you for a prophetic anointing even upon you. Thank you for the eyes of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit says that He's giving you new sight, new unction, new flow, a fresh perspective altogether. I sense a season of confusion. And the Spirit of the Lord says that I'm bringing things. You know when Jesus said uh, to Nathaniel that he's an Israelite in whom there's no deceit. I want to say this. You are a Tswana in you, there's no deceit. I see, I see, even as I, even as I speak, I see, I see Rustenbeck, even as I speak. I don't know where you come from, but I see that. And the Holy Spirit says that I'm beginning to mold who you are. I'm beginning to give you a new complexion, a new eyesight altogether. You will come into a place of greater growth, increase, and anointing in a few months to come. The Holy Spirit will begin to usher new waves and a new flow of the prophetic. Eyesight will grow, perception will grow, discerning of spirit will grow, and the Spirit of the Lord says that you are a discerner. You know things by His Spirit. So He will grow you in those fears. There is a prophetic river that is flowing from the throne. No more delay. No more being afraid. No more being afraid. As young as you are, the Spirit of the Lord wants to use you mightily. An increase. Father, I thank you, Lord, even for her in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Holy Ghost. I see somebody, never that one. You, you want to relocate. There's an issue of, of relocation. Ne? Issue of relocation, moving, and all that. Ne? There's that issue. There's a pressing issue that says relocate, move. Can I pray for you? It's, it's, it's like a crossroad kind of a thing. It's like a, a tough journey. Can I, can I just a need to... You want to move somewhere, and you want... It has been so uncomfortable where you are. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I pray that you may lead them. I pray that you may guide them. I pray that, Father God, even their move in the name of Jesus may be inspired by the Holy Ghost. I pray, Spirit of the living God, that you may guide them. I pray that they may not fall into the enemy's trap and plans in Jesus' mighty name. Even as I hold your hand, I feel like crying. I definitely feel like crying. My emotions just changed. The Holy Spirit will bring the necessary comfort. He says that I must tell you that don't worry about the future. Don't worry about the future. Your concern about the future, your concern about where you are heading, the Spirit of the Lord says that, don't worry. I can see the pressure. I can feel the tension and the heaviness and the load. And the Holy Spirit will help you through it if you trust and believe in Him. Take everything to Him in prayer. In Jesus' mighty name. Spirit of the living God, I thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, even for Him. That, Father God, you are giving Him a directive and a direction in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Spirit of the living God, even for her. In Jesus' mighty name. I thank you for grace. I thank you for your love and your hand even upon her. In Jesus' mighty name. I hear the words, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You have been feeling alone. You have been feeling sidelined. You have been feeling uh, like there's nobody. There are people around you, but it's as if there's nobody. 
there is a company around you, but you normally would feel even alone and, and aside and, and not having even any support. The Holy Spirit says that he'll give you the support. I see that he's embracing you like a mother. He's embracing you like a mother. I don't know what's happening between you and the mother, but there's an embracement of a mother by the Spirit of the living God. He says that the gaps you have missed, the support you didn't get, the work that you never got support from, the Holy Spirit says that I'm opening up that portal and I'm approaching you like a feminine person. Haven't I said in my word that I give comfort? I pray that he may embrace you. I pray that he may comfort you. I pray that he may raise you, says the Spirit of the living God. He says, yes, even in the past, the misuse and the abuse. He's telling me about the abuse. He says that even the abuse, he's healing you from it. Yes, it was unfair. Yes, it was not supposed to happen. And he says that I must tell you to forgive. Get into a place of forgiveness. I thank you, Spirit of the Living God, for healing, emotional healing that I'm seeing. I thank you that you are being motherly to her. The Spirit of the Living God says that I must even tell you not to worry about finances. He says that He will provide, He will take care of you. I see him meeting your needs. I see even a bursary. I don't know what you're doing, but I see something paid for you in relation to education. Don't worry about anything, says the Spirit of the Lord. Father, I thank you in Jesus' mighty name, even for him, by the name and the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. I thank you, Lord. Melody, melody, I hear a sound, a sound, and a sound. The Spirit of the Lord says that you like singing sounds unto Him. You like singing sounds unto Him. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord say that I'm visiting that which concerns you. That which concerns you. That which concerns you. That which concerns you. you. I see long standing issues and long standing prayers that you've been praying for a long time. And they have uh, become an issue of a diary that I see. Something like a diary, something bluish. But the Spirit of the Lord says that I must tell you that it's visiting that which you have been writing. I see that there's been a writing and, and, and all these things and there's been pain. And the Spirit of the Lord says that I must tell you that it's raising you up as a prophetic vessel as well. That you have seen a lot of things even through dreams and even through visions. And God says that I've been drawing you nigh. I've been dragging you to me. I've been pulling you to me. Even in the past few weeks and the past few days, you've been felt, you've been feeling like there's, you need more of prayer. You've been feeling like you need to get more into his word. The Spirit of the Lord says that I've been encouraging you to get into a much more deeper relationship with me. But I see the hand of the Lord, the right hand of the Lord overcoming for you. He's overcoming for you. I thank you, Holy Ghost, even for her in Jesus' mighty name. Spirit of the living God, guide her, lead her in Jesus' mighty name. Even as I pray for them in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. A friend of the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Spirit of the Living God, for she's a friend. She loves your union. She loves your move. She wants to know you better. She's been desiring for you. She's been asking you questions. She's been saying she wants to grow. She's been saying, use her. I thank you, Lord, for your speeding up the process even in her life, in her gifting, in her ministry as a believer. I thank you for your hand even upon her in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord says that I must tell you that he's protecting you. I sense the fear of something going wrong, the fear of something might go wrong. 
But I see the hand of the Lord. He says, I'm your shield and I'm your great reward. I see a hedge around you. And the Spirit of the Lord says that I must tell you that do not be afraid. Do not be afraid of the terror by night. Do not be afraid of anything. I hear the Spirit of the Lord says that I will cover you. I will protect you. My hedge is around you in the mighty name of Jesus. I see a conspiracy. A conspiracy. Okay, somebody wants you out of something. I don't know if you are waking or what, but, but there is just a thing of a, of a conspiracy that is happening even behind your back. I expose the enemy, Lord. I thank you, Spirit of the living God. And I bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you even for her in Jesus' mighty name. I pray that you may lead her in all that she wants to do and walk in in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you clap hands for the Holy Spirit? There's a need for prayer, ne? Yeah. There's a... Can we just pray, Basola? Can we just, just, just engage into tongues? Father, I come against the spirit of suicide, suicidal thoughts that I see. I come against them in the name of Jesus. I speak life in the mighty name of Jesus. You shall not die but live in Jesus' mighty name. I even come against the spirit of accident in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak protection. I speak a covering. I speak the blood of Jesus even upon your people in the mighty name of Jesus.
Hallelujah. I see an incident, Bazolani. It is more like uh, it's a womb problem that I see. And uh, there has been this thing, Yauri, uh, you know, when, when there are so many complications, womb-wise, and I'm not saying you're trying to get a child, get, hear me well, but there's a womb complication that you know about uh, that seeks to suggest, even doctors seek to suggest, or you'll never find a child, based on what is happening in your womb. I don't know if I should say you must come so I can pray for you, or you must see me after the service. But there is that condition that I see that is so very serious and it has become a headache. It has become a concern. It's a futuristic concern for you. Ne? So I would like to pray for you if, if you are bold enough to come through. If not, we can pray after the service. Spirit of the living God, can I have Mama Ruti to hold her or any ladies to hold her? Mama Leng, please. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Through them, we minister healing on the womb. I speak the fruit of the womb when the time is right. I set her free and whole from it. Any fibroid, any cysts, in the mighty name of Jesus. I rebuke them in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Spirit of the living God, that he who the Son sets free is free indeed, and she is solely free in the name of Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord says that I must tell you, you will have your own. You will have your own. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you even for her. We pray for the fruit of the womb, even the confusion that the enemy is trying to cause, even on her womb. I rebuke the enemy in Jesus' mighty name. Inasmuch as there are even few at home, I pray that she will produce abundance in Jesus' mighty name when the time is right in Jesus' name. Spirit of the living God, I thank you for healing and recovery. I thank you, Spirit of the living God, that you are causing her, Spirit of the living God, to get out of that mentality that she's not going to get any children. I speak heavenly help in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. New womb in the name of Jesus. beginning of new things in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Spirit of the living God, even for her healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God, I thank you for her. I thank you, Father God, for the fruit of the womb. I thank you and I rebuke any malfunction in her womb. Any malfunction, I rebuke it in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you for healing. I thank you for recovery. I thank you for a fresh start. I thank you for a fresh, even birth experience through her in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you that you are the healer. And now that you have revealed it, you will heal her in Jesus' mighty name. Do it for your glory, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you, Lord, for healing anointing and the healing grace in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for causing her to transcend into healing to get into a place of healing in the name of Jesus. I set her free and he who the Son sets free is free indeed. I set her free from any malfunction of the womb. In the name of Jesus, we thank you Lord for healing in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless you Lord and we thank you in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I think we must close. I greet my father, my father, the chariot of fire. Amen. Uh, I said to him, oh, no, oh, for that. Ne? I said to him, if I could sing.
he was going to be my son in singing, in music. Amen. Amen. Salim Ruti Cyril and your wife and everybody, and any leader and minister in our midst. Amen. I'm bad, Bazalonka Protocol. Please forgive me. Yeah, yeah, I'm very bad. Liko phone nga kitsi biki dumi disebiya. So, so, yeah, aki kitsi kichome kichome kai ne, or kitsi kene kai. The greatest enemy of uh, the prophetic. I think I'm just going to be there and there, Bazalone. I, there's no time anymore. Uh, the greatest enemy of the prophetic is inconsistency. That's the greatest enemy. It is not the devil, it is not, it is the fact that you're inconsistent. That's it. Uh, so if we can fix the issue, oh, thank you. Can you clap hands for them? <laughs> if we can fix the issue of uh, consistency, we will grow wider and taller in this grace. Amen. Uh, the other issue when it comes to the prophetic is the issue of being safe, playing it safe, wanting to be safe, and, and that has become a big concern in the prophetic. You can't break into new portals if you are still prophesying Joseph's coat of many colors. So he's out of the textile business now. Yeah. All right? So everyone who comes to you, you can't be saying coat of many colors, coat of many colors, coat of many colors, everybody. When are you addressing people? <laughs> so we need to understand the following. That the Holy Spirit, when it comes to the issue of the prophetic, is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And the standard must be Jesus the prophet. Not any person alive, not any person you know, it must only be Jesus the prophet. So if Jesus the prophet is your standard, then you will go back and read verses where Jesus used the word of knowledge, where Jesus was flowing in the word of wisdom, where Jesus was flowing in all these revelation gifts, if you have passion for it, really. And uh, let me tell you something. If you are called for something uh, just to help you, and I'm going to be a puzzle, I'm not going to look at here, go here anymore. If you want to grow in this gift or in this grace, you need to get into a place where you are jealous about it, where it, it, it really hits home when you see the misuse and the abuse that is out there. Because when you begin to get to that state, it means that God is raising you up to address such errors in the body and in his prophetic body. The truth is that the prophetic body of Jesus Christ has become a circus. It has become this thing, everybody must just come and watch a prophet or a person perform. We miss what it's supposed to do and what is supposed to work in us if we make it a show. We don't come here for performance, Bazalwan. If if we were coming here for performance, we would have got our reward. We are coming here for ministry. It is clearly ministry. And until we see each and every person as a spirit, you will never minister to them to the level of the spirit. All right? And uh, tomorrow, one of the things that I want us to do, Murut, is to do word of knowledge. I want us to do exercises on word of knowledge. So I want this to be intensified. I want you to, to get off your comfort zone. You know, that, that comfort zone, that code of many colors. I want you to get it off there. I want you to be in a place where you're going to see the gift working in you. And Abona, there's no hindrance. You are the hindrance. Abona, already Abona, Utsuhil. All right? Utsuha always already says to me, you don't have faith. And if you don't fa have faith, you can't flow in it. So there is a level of confidence that you need to come into. The confidence of I'm in the presence of the Lord. And there is nothing that comes to me ne, except it be through him. If I'm in his presence, after prayer, ne, 
after prayer, after riba sata, all the information coming to you is from the Holy Spirit. That's it. And uh, I want to show you this uh, and give you a few keys on, on, on how you know some stuff and how you see some stuff and, and particularly maybe even on names and so forth. Sometimes when you pray for a person, I'm, I'm just talking Bazolani, it's not a preaching. Sometimes when you pray for a person, you will see somebody you know by name, somewhere. Yeah. It's like I can pray for you, a face of timber. You get me? When I see a piece of timber, I know the person is timber. You get what I'm trying to say? So, so it's not that what gets over. It's the Holy Spirit giving you information. It's like sometimes when you prophesy a person, when you prophesy a person, you get a page, face of somebody whom you know and you know what they're going through. It means they're going through the same thing. So, you get what I'm saying? So, it's, 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 this is spiritual. This is you understanding what the Holy Spirit is trying to say to you. Because the Holy Spirit does not always come in an obvious way. It does not always come in an obvious way. It does not always come in a way you expect. And when I know you always want to hear, you always, you're on one right, one side, one side, why, why? But the Holy Spirit can use certain dynamics. And that's why it's important to ask questions sometimes when you're not sure. It was not wrong for Jesus to say to the woman at the, at the, at the, with the five husbands, where's your husband? Does it mean Jesus did not know? He wanted to make sure who he's going to say the right things because he has already received information. So now, when you ask, you are not less of a prophet. You are actually, it's not, you are not that you are, you are less of a prophet or you are less descending. You are asking for clarity. Because information that you are receiving is not yours. So sometimes it doesn't make sense. You have to ask for it to also make sense to you as a recipient. All right? So here's our issue. We receive a lot of things, but it's, we, we filter a lot to an extent that we don't have even see the power of the prophetic because we filter even things we are not supposed to filter. There are things that you have to say, not bluntly, not to expose a person, not to do funny stuff and so forth, but just to show Uri, the God of the prophetic still exists. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, until we, we, we are lost in this thing, we will never benefit from it. We am concerned at the rate in which people are becoming Zangomas. In the rate in which the kingdom of darkness is raising a standard. And you see people on TV, Baba Buta Tabatabo, now from these foreign and demonic spirits that are speaking to people, but accurately, and that's my concern. Hurry, why can't we raise a standard as well and come to a higher accurate standard than they are? Because the truth is that we are losing people to that kingdom. We are losing them. Now, now, you have been playing it safe and so forth. God sends people your way. You are playing it safe. Now, they go out there. They meet somebody who just walks with the spirit and they are not even apologetic. They say it as it is. Bull's eye prophetic uh, anointing hammer. The person is lost. Only bit of pulls. Only bit in a tough. Only bit all these things. Out of the church. Only because of that. So, my hunger, my deepest hunger is that we can all come to a higher level in this grace. And Abone, you grow to any level you want to grow into. God can desire for you. And Abone, when it comes to the prophetic, Bazalan, you don't pray for the prophetic. You do the prophetic. You don't pray, oh, God, anoint me so I can be prophetic. God, open up. Is anything happening? Nothing is happening. You anoint me so I can be prophetic. Anoint me so I can see in the spirit. I, I, anoint me. All right? So you've been praying that, but it's not working. So what is working? What is working is that you need to get into the field. You need to start prophesying. A prophet is not a prophet because he received information. A prophet is a prophet because he spoke what he received. The highest level of the prophetic is obedience. It's not reception, obedience. So meaning that when you receive, you are not yet a prophet until you obey the word. So it is until you open up your mouth, whether you are right or wrong, the Holy Spirit honors the fact that you took it, it took confidence to say it even if you are wrong. 
So, but the fact that you are disobedient in what you are hearing from him, this is what happens. When you are disobedient in what you are hearing from him, he can increase the waters. The Holy Spirit has people he trusts. He knows if I give it to Mapula, nobody June, July. But if I give it to Cyril, he will say it. So there's preference. Because ministry must happen outside of your fears. And, and I want to say the following. Sometimes the Holy Spirit does this, gives you a word of knowledge. You are still debating with another word of knowledge. Why is it about what debate and word of knowledge? Is it true? Is it not? Must I? Must I not? Like, 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 like. You know that you did not have that before you came here. It's a guy in two. Where does it come from? So this is my attitude every time I walk into a service. Number one, I must sense the mood of the service. Number two, I must know what the Holy Spirit is trying to do in the service. So that I don't, I don't get into a space and a place where I'm busy with high lofty revelations and there's ministry that must happen in the people. Because you can minister powerfully the weight. Read to a more utor somebody has hanged themselves. But you were in the meeting, you were the one preaching, but you could not discern that there's a spirit of suicide. So what am I saying? We must get to a place where our prophetic antennas are already active to receive information. Here's our biggest flaw. We don't come to church with expectations. We don't expect God to move. We don't expect the move of the Spirit. We don't expect Him to talk to us. Especially when you know you're not going to do anything. And uh, that thing has killed the revival. The fact that there is no expectation from our heart kills revival. Because don't let them respect a miracle, respect a resurrection, respect a healing, respect a God to speak, respect a all. The, we must come with our heart expectant. That's right. So when we are not expectant, this is what we have. That which, because we are not expectant, you're going to experience a dry service. In fact, the man of God must get here and stir you up and stir the service up and do all the hard work because you were not even expected from the beginning. So what am I saying? Our attitude must be fixed. We must fix our attitude. So when we come to church, our attitude should be that we are going there to minister together with the men of God. And let me tell you, the Holy Spirit will then drop a weight because your heart is right. You want to minister with them. All right? Especially when there's a channel, Robert, especially when there's a platform for you to can speak whatever. I don't think Hokatagum Ruti Wari God said to Umsebela Agar. No. Talk to the hand. <laughs> ne? I'm sure they're going to open up a platform for you to communicate, but the problem is that you did not come expecting anything to happen. We meet people, Bazolan, on the road. We meet people, uh, and, and, and God sees you as a voice that can minister to that person. And when it's just a casual talk, gone are the days where God has to always hijack you. God has to hijack your vocal cords, makes you to say a word, then you realize later, hey, I'm actually prophesying. Ne? The person is crying. You don't have to say, God says. When God is speaking, a person can attest, their spirit can attest yeah. that now is God speaking, it's no longer you. Yeah. Ne? Yeah. So we can't be walking in, in those accidents and incidents where God has to always take you by surprise. Yeah. We must be expectant. Whether and the prophetic Bazolan must be outside of these walls of the church. People must meet you and say, I had an encounter. By meeting you, I have an encounter. I had an encounter with God. They can attest that God is alive after meeting you. So, if you don't have that attitude, you will just be a lukewarm, prophetic believer, walking everywhere, looking nice, but non impactful spiritually. We can desire all these things, we can want all these gifts, but they will never work until we get into Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14. Them that has, by reason of use, have exercised their senses. Ex exercise what? Their senses. We need to get to a place where you exercise your senses. It's your responsibility to do that. God gives you the capability, the ability, but it is your uh, capability to exercise the gift that which God has given you. Ne? So we must get to a place where you exercise your gifts. And Abona, you start home. You start around your friends and so forth. You start around people you know. Ne? Why would you sit next to a person and a name comes into your mind. Why would that happen? Is that an accident? 
Aren't you a spirit person? So when that name comes, it is say in a conversation. Ne? The, such incidents have happened to me a lot of times. Then God will bring a name. And I would say, Mare, I grab a show, Kasturzak. I would say, Mare, la mutseba Miriam. Then the other one will burst into tears. Then I would ask the friend, or huira langa Miriam. No, huira la so so so. Then it moves from a name to ministry. Yeah. We now pray. Do you understand? Yeah. At the end of the day, it will lead you to ministry. Yeah. Whatever gift that manifests will lead you to ministry. Yeah. God. Only answers prayer. And uh, some things, mudimu batang, ubatari, ditu by revelation so that you can rightly pray for the person. So, when uh, revelation knowledge on, on the prophetic level, zero. Come and prophesy, you are the first to be afraid. Come, word of knowledge, yana, you are the first to run away. So, the Holy Spirit makes you jealous, gives you a word of knowledge, you are afraid to say it, because ministry must happen, he gives it to another. Then there's a response. When there's a response, the Holy Spirit makes you jealous. Makes you feel, but now you feel like you are disobedient. Now, in that scenario, this is what you must learn. Learn the voice. How did he speak to you? So that next time it happens the same way, you don't miss it. So it's a learning curve, woman. You learn. And uh, the best way to grow in the prophetic is to keep constant communication with the Holy Spirit. Ask him questions. Ask him to teach you. All right? So he will always teach you stuff and show you stuff and so forth. And, and uh, some of them, you don't have to act uh, big and all that. You ask questions, woman, as if in a conversation form. Ne? So the issue is that the standard of the prophetic is rising. And my concern is that people are remaining behind. People are remaining behind. Christians and believers in the body are remaining behind when the standard has been raised. I want you to look at your flow, your prophetic flow, when? Your prophetic flow. And think about it, or it has been the same throughout the years. That must be worrying. Same throughout the years. It must be very worrying. Or we must get to a place where you can see the growth. You can attest to the growth even as you live and serve God in his things. Amen. So, uh, tomorrow, uh, we're also going to do word of knowledge exercises where you're going to tell other people stuff that they know. Yes. Ne? That they know, that they went through, that they ate probably for breakfast and things like that. You're going to tell them stuff. And I want us to get to a place where we are stressed. Because without being stressed, you will never grow. Ne? We must be stressed. We must be at a place where we are fully stressed. One of the things that I made to God, a prayer that I made to God years ago, is that I want you to take me to a place where I can exhaust this grace. And I still pray to this day. I pray for the eyes of my heart to be opened every day. I pray that God may fill my lips with his voice every day. I pray that my ears will be open every day. And after I pray, I don't sit and say, ah, they open. I go and do ministry. <laughs> ne? So it doesn't end by prayer. It is an issue of exercise. By reason of use, have exercised their senses to discern both good and evil. So you must come to a place where you exercise your senses. You exercise them. If, if you are that person who is and you go to gym, once a year. Will you see the results? You won't see the results. You go and now once a year, jima wa jima, muscles dibu thuku, kabushi, utamaso. Have you ever seen mutwa jimile one day? When the muscles are painful, they think you can see the difference. All of a sudden, you are very diverse, the guy wind. You know those people. I will chase and go, I feel I expect to apologize. So, so if, you, if you exercise once a year, no progress. Once a month, no progress. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say this. This thing must be a lifestyle. It must be a lifestyle. It must be your life. Miss it so many times until you get it right so many times. Ne? 
So don't be afraid. I I've met people who have missed it. High two, high three. Ara, but naga give up. Asin chwakai. Asin chwakai. Kibritsa wanyano mungkarso. Ara nalemak. And wait, uh, Bazolan. Sometimes, sometimes you deal with people who are prideful, and I want to help you. Sometimes you deal with people who can't admit to what you are saying. Oh, but I'm a tourist so so. Arm, can I walk? Am I right? Hi, I go with people. Oh, wrong. At some time, uh, one lady did that. At some time, uh, I gave other people an exercise and so forth. Some say, "Baba, let's go to candidates and do that and so forth." And they went and did that. Had a little potato. Can we profess a little? Are not going to mark. Aban Romela Ray Balali li message a thing. Yo, it was hard. A week later, or Romela another message. And I'm sorry, you were right. <laughs> Imagine after the depression and the stress and what you went through. Oh, are you are right. I was like, why are you right? Why are you right? And I asked my pastor, he says, you are right. <laughs> so, so you'll get those who, who will have to first ask Murutori, I write in Chomar, Kinnamu. You get that, ne? But if, if you easily give up, you know the problem, Bona, uh, Elijah and Elisha, ne? Elijah and Elisha, that model is divine. The, the, the cloak war, was released. 300 prophets, ne? 300 prophets. Only one received the cloak. Only one out of 300 prophets. In, in Bethel, they prophesied, do you know that your master is going? In Jericho, again, do you know that he's going in two places? Ne? The discouragement you can get is from the same house of the God, Bethel. Ne? In relation to the prophetic. You can get people who cut your prophetic flow and all that in the house of the Lord. Sometimes you cut yourself in Jericho in the place of war, the place of battle. You can cut the flow yourself. Because you are going through your own personal things, you don't have time for the voice of God anymore. Ne? But I want you to understand this. Elisha gets the impartation only because of one thing he followed on when you give up to aid you disconnect to aid he followed on bale bata go bethel is going and all their prophecies are right but they are prophesying disconnection they are saying disconnect that's all they are saying disconnect why are you still following them you know what tell everywhere what tell everywhere what tell everywhere to an extent that when elijah was taken by whirlwind He's the only one who saw the whirlwind. All the 300 prophets, you know what they saw? Dust. Yeah. They saw dust yeah. and wind. That's why afterwards, after he was gone, they set out a search party. Three days. Yeah. By Lumat. Yeah. Prophets. Ne? Search party. But matter everywhere until Babu Abar no man. Ah, you Raman. Ah, uh, you. Elisha saw him go. Ne? And he moved on with ministry. He went on. He didn't join the search party. So what am I saying? You can't drink from this if you are not consistent in your work. Yeah. If you disconnect too early. Today, you are a prophet. Tomorrow, apostle. <laughs> Tomorrow, you cast out one demon. I'm an evangelist. Tomorrow, I'm this. Tomorrow. So, your inconsistencies yeah. robs you of what God wants to do in your life. So, I don't know this thing is how prophetic. Otola T.D. Jakes in you. Ah. So now, must he anoint T.D. Jakes in you? So, so you become that prophet who's, who's almost, almost, eating to Mark, almost as well. Oban, wahuta flow eating Marina almost. There's a, Oban, ki, ki, amper. You know, amper, amper, amper. Keep, keep, but you are, but it's ima mudi muman, but it's ima this prophetic flow. Okay, amper muto. And we can tell you, right, Mucho, either we're escaping the early somewhere. Uh, and the prophetic one, seven hood. Seven hood. Now, I've never seen anybody who grows nicely in the things of God, especially the gifts of God, who changes fathers. Like they change underwears. Consistency, Bazon, consistency. And I want to say, but I will say, but I will say, sometimes, very marry that God tested. You remain. You know, Bazalwan, I want you to hear this. 
You, you know, you know we, we normally rarely receive prophecies for people, from people. Very rarely. We have to believe God for a word and Abu, where sometimes God is prophet or somehow it's hard to believe you are hearing it. But when you have that leader, God says, I must tell you this and that and that. And I record immediately. I write down things. And I take them serious. Because you can't prophesy me uh, things that pertains to destiny and growth. So when I was the or join us something else, uh, I would say that the river you are joining can is muddy. You are from a clean crystal river. But because you just have fame, you shift. All the rivers look nice from outside until you join in. Now, later, but well. Now, do you expect the leader to start with you to go back and deliver you and start with you from back and move with you forward? Ne? So, in, in all these things, Bazolan, the issue of consistency in the prophetic remain consistent. Even when they change, even when they move, even when they say, I'm a Elijah is going today. Do you know that? Consistency. So, so I'm saying this because these are keys, ne? Bazolan, these are keys for your growth and expansion in the gifts of God. Mudimu utest the commitment. He's very good in doing that. He tells commitment, or can you commit? If you can't commit, you can't even commit to his gift if you can't commit to his vessel. If you can't commit to a chap, you can't commit to a gift. So first, commit to a house. Dissect you, dissect you, finish, and go. I mean, the, one of the weirdest prophecies I've ever received uh, really go some prophetic conference and uh, we are praying, they were praying this girl comes with this face uh, Solomon because demon so before demon let us be proud. I'm Kabuzayas. No man keep me. I'm running Kabuzi. So officially meeting Ara. I'm running Kabuzum prophet. Kabuzum postal. So you Solomon. Solomon or Samson? Kill it. So it's a little written. Solomon or Samson? Somewhere there. You Solomon. Now I was scared. I'm like this guy. Solomon. Now this other man of God is trying to walk out. Ne? And I'm going to leave a bit early because I'm writing an exam tomorrow. Are you? Come here. This girl. Come here. Stand here. Where do you think you're going? Can't you see God is moving? God is moving. All right. So, so what am I saying? You don't Speak for the gift. The gift must speak for itself. There is a problem. There, there is a problem when you get to a place and a person, before you meet the person, you meet the gift. There's a problem. Are you know me? I'm an apostle. You know me, I'm a pro- there's already a problem. A gift you don't preach. A gift you demonstrate. Ne? You don't come to us and tell us, I'm a prophet, I'm an event. Let's see the fruit of what you're talking about. Demonstrate and let the people say, truly you're a prophet or you're an apostle or, or you're this, you're that. Ne? So, so what am I saying, Bazar? And I know I'm a haphazard, I'm everywhere. But I'm throwing nuggets there and nuggets there to try and help you. Hore, if you want to grow consistent, t- stay put where you are, desire these things, don't turn back, don't look back, press on, follow on. In your wrongs, in your mistakes, do it. Ne? Do it. And uh, the greatest hindrance again is you judging yourself. Never judge yourself. Uh, God is not judging you and he understands you are practicing. He understands you are exercising, you are doing scripture. So even if you get it wrong, don't judge yourself and, and hit yourself so hard that God will have to send another prophet to redeem you again. So forgive yourself quickly and say I made a mistake, it's fine, it's okay. You move on and you desire to make another one. <laughs> so you move on 
and you learn as you go. Never so long. You learn as you go. Ironically, the Holy Spirit never change a lot, changes a lot how he speaks to you. Doesn't change it a lot. Doesn't complicate. You know why the voice of the Holy Spirit is hard to hear? The reason is that it's too simple. That's why. That's why you can easily fight it because it's too easy. It's, it's, he's made it more like natural, your natural voice. He's made it more like your natural thoughts. So because it's more natural, it's more simple, it's, he has put simplicity in it. Is that why you are fighting it? Yeah. You want that voice? Hey. Yes, Samson. Samson. <laughs> ne? Hey, car Samson, Samson, amen, la una le word of knowledge. <laughs> why, amen? Murut, Murima Ronald, the word of knowledge. Stop aka giving, please, Mike. Murim Murim. Babuze. That's the voice you want. And uh, the simplicity of his voice makes his voice actually difficult to hear. Because it's simple. It's so simple, 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 simple. It is hard to... Differ. That's why you have to exercise it. You have to know when it's you. You have to know when it's him. You have to... And you have to always look at the environment where you are. It determines his voice as well. So when I'm in church, I know he speaks. He will speak to me. When I'm in church, I'm already... My attitude is fixed. He will speak to me. He will whisper a word. He will say something. That's my attitude. And that, the hunger I have for him to speak opens up his voice for him to speak. So, so the same thing. I, I walk into a service, I say, Holy Spirit, give me a word of knowledge. I ask for a word of knowledge. You get me? Give me, a, a, tell me who's sick, he tells me. Okay. And a word of knowledge does not only, it's not only sensations and pains. Sometimes word of knowledge comes, is a voice that speaks to you and say, uh, chest problems, like now. I know there's somebody with chest issue. You understand? It is not, I'm not feeling anything here. It is the voice that said chest problems. Do you understand? Hori, word of knowledge does not always have to be sensation. When I read, make me feel it. <laughs> Can't it today you are not going to feel it. You must hear it. Yeah? So, so what am I saying? Don't confine him in one way of speaking. If you, if you walk in here, and Abona, always... Uh, be cognizant of your mood. Your moods. Your moods. You cannot say this thing again. No, no, no. You can't say this thing again. You can't say this thing again. Your mood changes. You are suddenly angry. The Holy Spirit is speaking. So, now you need to know how to interpret that for you to be relevant. Ne? You need to know you are not being angry right now. Or, or you are easily irritated. All of a sudden, it it's already a prophetic language. You were not like that, and you are, it's not your character. That's why some people will say, Hey, I acted out of character. It was in character in the spirit, but out of character in the natural. So you need to learn to, to then. Uh, know what the Holy Spirit is trying to say and what he's saying and, and get the drift, move with it. Woman, uh, so it's, it's just that simple thing. So you get into a service sometimes, you feel like vomiting. Like vomiting. And I'm talking about the sensations on your body that you know. Again, uh, you know, I wasn't feeling like this. So those things are a language of the prophetic. You need to understand what it means, what God wants to do and so forth for you to do ministry. So if we don't understand that basic language of the Holy Spirit that he uses on our body, then we're in trouble. We're going to miss ministry, we're going to miss what he wants to do, uh, how he wants to do it and all that, and we're going to end up just being normal believers who come to church, slap hands and go home without impacting any life or changing any life. <laughs> Lastly, can I pray for you? Watch this. Amen. Spirit of the living God, we thank you. Thank you that you are healing her. In the name of Jesus. I thank you for healing. I release healing. I command healing. In Jesus' mighty name. Can I have Baruti to help me, please? So that we can quickly close. Amen. I thank you, Lord, for healing. Thank you for recovery. In the name of Jesus, I speak to you. In the name of Jesus, I speak to you. In the name of Jesus, I speak to you. I think that's what I'm doing. I don't know 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 what I'm doing. I don
Hallelujah. We may stand in his presence. Can we appreciate the gift of God? Um, uh, Griffith Makuse. Amen. Uh, we, we thank God for you. And we also appreciate Caesar's praises. <laughs> Amen. And his prelude as well. Amen. Amen. I think each one of us would, uh, in the things of the Spirit, you would really be having a serious problem if you are somehow going through a spiritual slumber, especially in this season, it will be to your detriment, Ms. Alon. There are seasons in God. We are living, Bazaran. I'm here to close. Don't worry. We are living in a season where the Almighty God is, is choosing then what's going to happen next in coming generations. And that's very, that's very crucial. It does not require any one of us to be deep about it. You can afford not to be hungry in your own personal capacity in this season. In the things of God, for the Spirit of God has been doing that through his servants, through sermons, so much more. We are critically in that time where the eyes of the Lord are running to and fro, looking for those whose hearts. We are in that season of the psalmist where he says, draw me. In fact, the songs of Solomon, he says, draw me and I will run after you. The psalmist says, I will follow, my soul follows hard. Yeah. The relevant book uh, is by... Uh, Tommy Tenney, yeah. uh, the ghost chasers, that in your own space, seek the Lord. The Lord is going to challenge your standing, your doing, your sayings. But there is a clarion call. There is a clarion call. There is that sound of a trumpet. Even those that are deaf in the spirit and lazy can hear it. It's unavoidable. Hence, I'm challenging any layer of spiritual slumber that could be inexistent. There's a drawing all by yourself. It's not an isolation from people, but a separation from the world. There is a deep personal and corporate call from the king to each one of us concerning the things of the spirit. The Holy Spirit is re resuscitating, refreshing. But moreover, it's because it's raising the standard against what the enemy is doing in our age. Because there's an increase of evil, it's not that there's a revival because somebody prayed. You know you were lazy praying and you were committed to other things. God is giving us stuff we don't deserve. Do you understand that? That is why your, fa your quick fasting on Monday is not going to help you get into where you need to go. It is your sincerity. It is your openness and your desperation and your hunger and your thirst that is going to determine whether you cash up. The Spirit of God is already in a move and He's granting graces that are going to not mesh up with what the enemy is doing, but supersede. So, you open the Bible, it will feel like bread to eat. 
some relationships will not be that interesting anymore. I've always looked at it from the Beatitudes where Jesus talks to us about uh, the blessedness of the believer. Because when Jesus says blessed, that word actually means to be happy, Bazalwa. To be happy. But there's a difference between the pursuit of happiness and God saying you are happy. When God says you are happy, he means three things. He means you are blessed. The word blessed, and that word has to do with the Ishia Hore. One, you have a, an active and healthy relationship with God. In season and out of season. A progressive uh, sanctification. That is saying you are now having more hatred for evil than a need to repent for things that you should not be repenting for. Some of you are aging. Whatever that you are struggling with when you were 17, if it is still the problem at 30, the likelihood is that that thing is going to bury your ministry. So, instead of thinking, you need a serious introspection. Sermons have done their part, I still did not change. A rebuke did its part, I still didn't change. Somebody corrected me, I still didn't change. So you have to fight the biggest enemy that you always look at in the mirror, which is called self. And then say, enough is enough, I'm going to pursue God. It's personal. Before it can be corporate, Barcelona, it's personal. But I'm looking for the hungry ones, the master. He stands on the feast of tabernacles, not Passover, not Pentecost, the last feast. And he says, come to me, all of you who are thirsty. And he says, I have something for you to drink. You see, the mood is changing. The reason why spiritually the mood is changing is because Cleopas and his companion, I, in fact, the guy called his companions is actually Simon. I read somewhere, I was like, why did I miss it? It's Cleopas and Simon. On the road to Amaka, as the Lord was speaking, there was a burning in their hearts. There is that unction in you that says, seek me. And then it demands and it costs you. It's costly to serve and to follow Jesus. But here's the thing. The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. We are praying for the Lord of the harvest to send more laborers. South Africa is going to experience a tidal wave. Kirki wave after wave after wave. What some of your fathers prayed for and sought after is something that a generation that is hungry enough. You are waiting for your perfection while God is looking for your hunger. God knows that whatever that you are struggling with, you will continue to struggle with it. But the minute you come to a place of being hungry for him, you will forget about what you are struggling with. You are not going to overcome this by saying, saying it's fully sono. You are going to realize along the way, but I no longer have this problem. So there are a few things to take into heart. One, blessed, happy. When the master calls you happy, he says you have a healthy relationship with him. Two, you have a healthy relationship with other believers as well. I want to usually mood. I want to amount to for no reason. And that does not mean you don't stand for the truth, you don't contend for the faith, you don't 
defend, you don't stand by your convictions and stuff like that. What it simply means is that uh, you have a peaceful relationship with everyone on a brotherly level across the board. That's what it means to be blessed. And thirdly, to be blessed is confirmed also by the fact that you have a good relationship with the animals. You don't look at the dog and you want to kill it. Because the, because the first time, you know I'm afraid of dogs. All, all of you know that. I'm, I'm afraid of dogs. But I love them in my heart, but I'm just afraid of them. Because everything that God has created is beautiful by design. So Ning is a You have that kind of a relationship. Because the word blessed, when it was spoken, it was blessed to address those three areas. Blessed be the God who created you, the creation of God and the animals of God. That word can only be spoken to address that. And it is so powerful that it deals away with any area where there's a case. Now I want you to say I'm blessed. I'm blessed. And you cannot afford to say I'm blessed, but you are not smiling. <laughs> because it connects with the fact that I'm so blessed in my relationship with God if anybody will tell me at the, about the case, I will laugh at them. Because my blessed state communicates the issue of good tea. It's probably not something God is giving me now, but it's, he's going to give it to me. It's not a curse. So, mamelange, uchesu wama, asentabi en uashola magamu. Ati blessed are those, and I will only say this one, blessed are those who are poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of God you know that what that means spiritually in your walk if you are not poor in spirit you will never experience anything of the kingdom of God first Wake up every morning recognizing your spiritual poverty. Recognize your spiritual bankrupts. How do you do that? You look at the level that Elijah was walking in, and if you are not experiencing just Elijah, you know you are poor spiritually. Use the servants of God of old as a barometer to try to double check your spiritual capacity the weight that they carried I mean I, you read a verse and Enoch walked with God I was meditating this morning I read the verse in Philippians and I know what that verse means and I know how, how many people have misused that it says Paul counted all these things that Jewish tradition holds in high regard as done in order to gain Christ. So my meditation was I'll give you another one so that you can just see Uguti, we are in a state of spiritual poverty. Blessed are those who mourn. If you see a man kissing a man and nothing happens in you, you must know that you are in a spiritual slumber. So, if I'm, I'm, I'm desensitized in my spirit to look at evil and as if it's, there's nothing wrong. The things that God detests don't move me anymore. And that on its own, I am not mourning. I'm supposed to say, like Habakkuk, where's justice, where's righteousness in the streets? Because that's what the prophetic should produce. So if you can count all the Beatitudes, there are actually nine keys to revival. One of them should be, in order to arrive at the state of spiritual hunger at its height, 
you must always be happy for being persecuted instead of complaining. Because when the Bible mentions persecution, it uses the prophet as the example. That there is no way that they hated him, but they don't hate you for the same things. Let's conclude. The Hebrew writer says this concerning Christ the Son after he compares him with the prophets and then he compares him with the angels and he finds him superior as a, as a messenger. And then in chapter 2, he's going to release a warning to say if he's superior to the angels and to the messengers, you are warned that if you neglect such a great salvation, you are going to uh, suffer the repercussions. But now think about what I'm saying. He says, and God anointed Jesus. powerful. oil powerful. powerful. the oil of gladness. Above, because he hated iniquity and did what? Loved what? Righteousness. Another sign that you are, hung, you are hungry is that you are hungry for doing right. And it begins where? In the church. So, because he hated iniquity and loved righteousness, God anointed him with the oil of gladness above his fellows. My prayer is to go back home because some of you are more anointed than your fathers. Are more anointed than your brothers. It's just that you are not hungry enough. So God says the key to being used by God, I'm looking for the hungry ones. I'm looking for the hungry ones. I'm looking for the hungry ones. How can check out what Muruti was talking about, whether it be consistent on, on Oshitsa consistent? It's a man How hungry are you? I wish Negile Mudi Mutatileli. Kiatiba, how I would have gotten candidates for the kingdom. Eh, ya Muruti. Even Negile Mudi Mutatileli. If a billion for seeking God, so hear me, hear me, hear me. That hunger that you have. To wake up in the morning for, for Zara. For Tabaya security. How can I for God? Because money easily becomes God like that. Because in any matter to replace God, because it becomes the source for your life. So, Bazalwan, Mudimu, Honaje Kishapan, too simple, the idols of our hearts. Ukaba Shapa, but Baba Nini. In a madhouse, can do it on a little idols. Idol, little nyana idols of a heart. So we can come to a place of great revival if we can all recognize our spiritual poverty. And how do I, what do I use? I go back to the book of Acts. And they filled all Jerusalem with their doctrine. As they were going to prayer, at the gates called beautiful, they said to the man, silver and gold we do not have, but such as I. So if we are not doing that, it means there is something that they had in terms of the level of their hunger. And that's the only difference because there's, you know, the Holy Ghost is different. No, they had the same Holy Ghost. At worst, they didn't have the Bible. Imagine. The Bible was preserved through confessions. 
creeds until later it was canonized in the 4th uh, century now imagine but basa tswarang bible ba ba vanga persecution turning the entire uh, uh, jerusalem judea and samaria around for 30 years revival ya dula for 30 years ibe a visitation from god that is why how kala tena 1979 Mudimunali generation in Alanga is for 1979. This is 2022. Okay, gets a fave or Lena Mudim. I can't depend on in the previous season. There is whatever you want to do, don't do it without me. I can't reach your peanut alone. Hobane Mudim was seriously calling a generation, but I can tell you this. Just like it happened with the virgins, it's happening in this generation. We hear the call, but we do not respond. We're not responding, I'm telling you. Because if there was a response, there will, there will be a greater impact. Because what God seeks to do is personal, Mara is going to have to have a corporate impact. So he's moving from this thing, yeah, a one-man show thing, to say they will no longer say, what a mighty man. Now they will say, what a mighty church. By the mercies of God, the God who we owe, we owe holiness as a sign, as an act of gratitude for his mercy. So that when I cry, genuinely I'm crying, this must not happen. Because we are in a spiritual slumber. Father, we pray for an awakening. Let's lift up our hands. Father, we pray for an awakening. You're awakening us to the prophetic ways and streams and realms. Our desires, oh God. All of it is mainly for your glory. We are asking for the desire to be hungry for you. For anyone under the sound of my verse who understands this cry, male and female, young and old, because, Father, you can use anyone who's willing to come and drink. We refuse for this generation to be like Jerusalem that has missed the time of God's visitation. Father, I thank you that you are even skipping processes and protocols because there is a need for a transformed generation that should produce the fruit of righteousness. I pray for someone who can't pray for themselves now. I ask, Spirit of God, that we may be hungry. Somebody sang a song that said, Lord, I'm hungry. You don't have to sing it with me. For a mighty move of God, Lord, I'm thirsty. Pour out your Holy Ghost. Lord, I want to see the hand of God move mightily inside of me. I'm hungry for a move of God. So, Hallelujah. I'm hungry and I'm thirsty for a move of God. Fix my thirst. Fix my hunger so that I can appropriate what heaven has to offer in my generation. Hallelujah. Father, as we disperse, I thank you for Jenny Messies, for angelic host and protection. You've commanded them according to your word as heirs of salvation to minister as spirits for the heirs of salvation. We give you glory. We give you praise. And I pray, Father, that you remind us, 
the need to find ourselves on our knees because we recognize daily our spiritual poverty. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So pray when you wake up in the morning because you are simply making a statement, I am still not full. I'm hungry. Amen. Hallelujah, Bazalani. Can appreciate Muruti. Hallelujah. Refer it, just some housekeeping. Just some housekeeping. Uh, please, why do you pack it uh, for a number of reasons? Go there, I took without a ticket. You know, we don't want someone outside here to move to a drive. I want to give my rubber start a while. So please pass by the information desk, make sure you get your ticket and then uh, buy the other things. I get, uh, number two, you can still register for the school. Uh, I think we can accommodate maybe nine people. Uh, yeah, um, we can accommodate about nine more people. Uh, please, fit uh, a good registration desk. For the school tomorrow. Tomorrow on our service was a lot. Naked school. Our tomorrow school of ministry, 10 a.m. sharp. We start naked tomorrow, and then Sunday, ne the conference continues. I want uh, there'll be kratos, there'll be dynamis. Uh, Muruti Morocco will be here. Uh, Muruti Neo Church will also be here. Uh, yeah, Basalani. Thank you, thank you so much. Amen.